Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to talk about three commodities, in particular from the greening perspective. But my presentation largely will be dealing with looking at the challenges and the potential pathways to sustainability within the African context in a broader framework. And this uh, presentation is a package of over five different chapters that will be coming out very soon and you will see a lot of figures and numbers but more focused on three commodities cocoa coffee and cashew next please yeah uh, in this presentation i'll be focusing on three uh, main issues that are really outstanding from the broader perspective of the african three commodities specifically looking at coffee cocoa and cashew as i've said before and the first issue and the most important one is the productivity aspect and as you can see on this graph we still have a big challenge of the productivity element which is the yield the production per unit area. And if you look at these graphs, you this is for cocoa, for coffee in particular. If you see all of it over time, there is nothing that is really improving. All of it is really going down. And we need to make sure that there is an emphasis on this. Next slide, please. Yeah, just for a quick glimpse of how the reality is on the ground. For example, if you look at Ethiopia, the black dots in both graphs are from Ethiopia over time. You see the harvest area and the production. This is all, almost quite understandable and known. If you look at the two, they are almost parallelly growing. That, parallelly, in a sense, they are almost on a one-to-one -one basis, which really tells us that any increment in production volume we see is not actually because of productivity change, but it is more expansion into different ecosystems or adjacent production areas. The same with Kenya that you see in the same graph. Next, please. Uh, this is also for cocoa. We don't see any different trend in the overall period that we have looked at during our analysis except in one country, Togo, which is really showing some progress as per the reported data that is available. Otherwise, most of the major cocoa producing countries in Africa do still have a big challenge when it comes to the productivity aspect. Next. The second thing is the reliance on the export market and its implications. And here I just uh, would like to put emphasis on these are the major cocoa producing countries, at least four of them. If you look at the export to production ratio that we are having, it is quite high. What does this mean? The smallholder farmers who are producing this commodity are exposed to a number of factors which is beyond their control because the export market is not guided or is not under the control or under the jurisdiction of the nation which is producing or the communities who are producing. That means your risk at the local level would be much higher than uh, what would be expected. Next, please. Uh, when it comes to cashew, this is an interesting development. Uh, if you look over time, the area that is being uh, used for ca cashew production, Africa is actually taking over in a large magnitude compared to all other parts of the planet where production of this crop is possible. If you look at the area, African numbers are actually going much higher, up to 4.7 million hectares by 2019 but the other parts of the world other continents outside africa it is still remains stagnant or is even decreasing next uh, this is one important graph that we have in in one of those chapters that i have said and just look at the red, the graph which has a red bars most visibly the raw cashew nut export if you look at this one, Africa is the major exporter of the raw cashew nut. This is important. 
on the on the on the right on the left side you actually see africa is the least on the shelled cashew nut export this is very important when it comes to what goes to those individual farmers or what goes back into the economy of those producing countries or communities. Why is Africa totally exporting almost the major share of any of the raw cashew nut export is coming from the continent? Is it not because of lack of technology or what is hindering this value addition aspect? Next, please. Uh, I don't want to go too much into the detail of what is in this graph, but it's just to show you from the farm to the final export and import of shelled cashew nut over time and also along the processes. If you look very carefully on the production side, globally Africa has 57%, but when it comes to the final ex export of the shelled cashew, which is to be used, the continent has only a share of 6.6%. And this is very important because at the end of the day, the better value is actually captured when you have the good product which is sellable on the market rather than the raw product which is up from the farm directly because of the values it fetches on the market. And the smallholder community farmers are the major losers in this structure. Next. Uh, the third, which everyone uh, uh, knows and we've been talking for some time, is the global commodity price fluctuations. And you can see for both coffee and cocoa from different angles on the two graphs. But what is important or the main point why I brought this up is, <clears throat> sorry, for companies, there are insurance schemes when such price shocks happen. But for smallholder farmers, they have nowhere to go. They will be bearing the consequences of these shocks or these price fluctuations on their own. Their governments are too weak to support them. They don't have insurance schemes and they are left on their own. And this is why it is very important to look at these global commodity price fluctuations, not only from the global level only, but also from individual households who are contributing to the production of these commodities. Next. Three minutes left, Lalisa. Yeah. So overall, what is happening? We have issues to do with aging of the cocos and coffee stems. We have low productivity, which I've mentioned in the beginning. And this whole chain of issues is actually putting the smallholder farmers in a vicious cycle of problems, in a vicious cycle of actually, if we can call it poverty, they can't get out of it because we have different issues which are putting them back into the loop where they can't get out. If you look at it, the, the return because of the poor productivity is low and because they expand to increase production, the products that they produce from such a, a, pro, a practice is often said unsustainably produced. Because it is unsustainably produced, it is always given a low market price, and they are again getting a small share of what they have produced. So they are always in that loop where they could not actually get out by themselves, and we have to support them. Next, please. What are farmers doing? I mean, responding to these kinds of situations. In Kenya, if you look at the avocado versus coffee trend, it's not just to say avocado is replacing coffee, but there is a trend which is emerging in Kenya. Over time, if you look at the production of coffee versus avocado, avocado is actually taking place more than the coffee, which is going down. Why is this happening? Because farmers are looking at options which are giving them much better in an easier way, getting them more products or more income for themselves and for their families. Crop switching is one. Next, please. Ecosystem displacement. You see this is in Cameroon where oil palm fields are actually climbing to the mountains, to the hills, because 
people have to expand to increase production so that they get a better amount of money that they could use for their families because productivity is as i've said low next uh, one minute left Yalisa. yep next please this is also happening forest clearance because they have to expand and they have to increase their production next please Uh, can you go to the next slide? Next slide, next slide. Yeah, this is important. Poor value addition is poor value capture. And if you take the case of coffee, two thirds of the global coffee and coffee product export value is captured by top 10 countries. None of them is African. Yeah, but Africa is contributing 12% of the global coffee production. It's the same issue when it comes to uh, when it comes to the cocoa case. If you look at who is capturing the values from the coffee aspect, a fourth of the global export value of coffee is actually captured by countries who do not even grow coffee. What are they doing? They are importing and adding value. Next slide, please. So what should be done? I think there are lots of things we do. There are insurance schemes for the smallholder farmers. It should be done in action, not just by talking. Defining the roles of trading houses and empowering cooperatives, because farmers are losing to these different entities who are built in local level, at local levels and making money out of the efforts of communities. Uh, value addition is also an important bit. At continental level, there is also a need to think about how do we increase the value capture by trading locally while also ensuring the global demand is supplied for. Oh, uh, can you do one click more? Uh, Lisa, yes, this more. is the last piece. Okay. okay. Yep, this is the last slide. So uh, it is interesting to see Africa producing exporting and also importing the same thing uh, can you put it back please just last second okay fine thank you